Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm just going to quickly discuss last data sets. Why would you use these? So I've carried out my ETL process and I've got four individual last tiles in. I could drag all of those uh, into my workspace. However, that's going to get a bit messy and it's not very good for doing analysis. So I'll remove those and I'll show you how to create a last data set. All the last data set is going to do is a lot like the mosaic data set. It's just going to bring all those last tiles together so you can run any analysis or change the symbology of all of the data at once. So in order to do that, where you want to save or where you want the last data set to be created, right click, go new and last data set. Quickly rename it, give it a suitable name. And then once you've done that, you simply need to add these folders into that data set. And the way to do that is right click on it, go properties click last files, add files, and then navigate to those files. You can either select all of them or just a couple, just want to add a few and add those. Okay, there and there, there's a bit of information you can get from there. Uh, you can look at the points basin. That's quite useful if you want to do analysis later on uh, to know that. You can check statistics and see if they've been calculated. Sometimes they have, sometimes they haven't. So it's worth just clicking update got the option there okay and finally we'll check the coordinate system see what our coordinate system no coordinate system look at that okay favorite british national grid check that again there we go british national grid sometimes you need to change that sometimes you don't Okay, once that's created, let's drag it in and see what it looks like. Excellent. So as you can see, all four tiles have come in. Uh, when you first add them into the map, you won't be able to see them. You shouldn't be able to see them. Uh, you've got this little data percentage uh, number here. And at the moment, it's showing none of the data. And that's because if it showed 100% of the data, it's probably going to crash your system. Okay, so as you zoom in, you'll see points appear. At the moment, you can see I've got 2.6% of the points. And as I continue to zoom in, you'll get more and more points. OK, so it's going to change based on how far zoomed in or zoomed out you are. So that's just something to bear in mind. OK, what are we looking at then? So at the moment, it's vector data. It's a series of points. It's a point cloud, basically. We're looking at it in map view. So we're looking 2D. In order to see what we're looking at, if we click on uh, the layer, and we go up to this last data set uh, options that will be available. We can start to go through the tabs. So you've got all of the normal uh, swipe and transparency effects on the left. As we go to symbology and we hit the drop down, this is where we'll get the different ways we can symbolize the last data set. There are processes you can run to give you more options in here. More on that later. So at the moment, we've got elevation as points, which is what we're looking at at the moment. If you were to click on any of those points, uh, you'd be able to get the elevation of that individual point. Okay, next up, we can look at it by class. So the last data will be classified into classes. In an ideal world, they will all be correct. However, they often won't be. So there are processes we can run to correct those. But as you can see, I've got brown for uh, ground. The little gray points are unassigned. I've got low vegetation, medium and high vegetation. And then ideally, I would have buildings, they would be red and there would be a building classification, which would be number six. That hasn't happened in this instance. So in a later video, I'll show you how to correct that. OK, so that's viewing the data as points. We can also symbolize it as a layer that will be created on the fly. So you can think of this like a tin. Again, that will change depending on your scale. Uh, and you'll get a different percentage of the data displayed. And this is really useful for visualizing the data. Uh, and seeing what's happening. Okay, so that's as elevation. You can also look at the slope as a surface. We can look at the aspect. Do you want to hurt your eyes? Uh, we can also look at going back to points quickly. The return. So um, if you've looked into the theory of the data, then you should know that uh, different points will give different return values. This is how you can display that. Uh, and then also the intensity. And then finally, 
can do contours or edges. Okay, let's uh, let's have a look at some data as a surface and click through some more buttons. So we can change our display limit, uh, and this will just change how many points are displayed in total. So mine's at eight hundred thousand. I could up that. It's going to depend how much data you've got in there, your system requirements. Are you looking at it in two D or three D? Okay, so feel free to have a play with that, and also the density of points you can slide that along. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to crash my system during a demo. Okay, finally, you can filter points. So at the moment, we're seeing the effects of all points. However, if we just look at the points classified as ground, then as expected, we lose these building points and the vegetation points. If you are going to carry out any uh, processing, so if you're going to export this data as either as an a raster, so for instance, a DEM, uh, so a digital elevation model, which could either be a DTM, digital terrain model, for just the ground, we would use this option. Or if you wanted to create a DSM, digital surface model, then you would use all points. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Any changes you make in here will affect uh, the output of analysis, which we'll do in a second. Okay, so that's the display tab or the appearance tab. Feel free to play with that. Then we'll move on to the data tab. So here we can export the data in a number of ways. We could extract a small subset of the LAS. So if I wanted a smaller LAS data set, I could do that. We can colorize the pixels if we have imagery. That's really useful when I show a video in that. You can thin the data, uh, tile it. We can export buildings as a multi-patch. Again, very useful. Uh, that will, that's a very useful function. So we'll look at that. You can export to raster for creating uh, DMs, as I've just discussed, also tins, and then finally as a scene layer. There's also various statistical functions we can carry out. More on that later. You can add and remove files from the last data set. Uh, we can calculate the area and volume and different height metrics. Locate outliers. So if you have any birds flying across your data, I haven't found any in this tiles, but I've downloaded tiles before where you get aerial obstacles between the aircraft and the ground, such as flocks of birds. And they're very apparent when you do find them. Uh, you can remove those and again, create different surface derivatives and finally visibility tools. And then onto classification. So if I change my symbology quickly, uh, back to class. So we can already see that buildings should be classified uh, as red. So class six and they're missing so all these buildings are counted as low vegetation so over on the classification tab i've got the option to change the classification of these points in a number of ways so i can either reassign that classification just tell it tell it no everything that is a five should be a six uh, or i can run various automated processes trying to classify buildings etc etc i'll do more videos on this later uh, on the individual processes got uh, proximity classification etc so there's a lot we can do in there uh, a lot of things we can do however this data is really useful and then finally we can display their data in 3d so i'm going to open up a scene very quickly uh oh we'll convert this to 3d to a local scene see what happens Okay, so that's opened up. I'm now looking at a local scene. I'm just going to turn off my underlying imagery for a second. And if I start to navigate round, we can really visualize that data in 3D. And that is incredibly useful. Exactly the same as before. We can flick through those uh, different options. Once it loads, we'll be able to see uh, different heights and things like that. Okay. Now, you'll see that points are being added as I move around, and that's because of that point limit that I talked about. So if I up to that, I'll do that now and see what happens. We'll try 2 million. If it crashes, it crashes. Uh, looking good. So it takes a bit longer to load, but hopefully you won't get that effect. Uh, and there we go. So that is a quick intro into last data, and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for listening.